good day. There you go, and what do you know? Don't strike a light. Good day, good day. And how you go, and just say good day, good day, good day, and you'll be right. Welcome to the Midweek in Times News and Trends Briefing as we share major events and what is happening around the world as it relates to Bible prophecy. Today's date is Wednesday, October 18th, 2017. As we look at the events around the world and the uh, different news items, it's always interesting to see the reactions of individuals when you talk about these incidents or news items with others that you encounter out in the workplace or in schools and things like that. And there are some who just flat out come up with a whole different perspective and conclusion. And you're thinking, where did they come with that? And then there's others that have what, you know, they have the same perspective, same idea, same philosophy as you do. But it boils down to this, and we've talked about this many times before. It's about a worldview. What worldview do you have? Do you have a biblical worldview or do you have a secular worldview? Is, uh, and, and as a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, you are going to have a different perspective than pretty much anyone out there. And even from different um, groups within Christianity will have difference of opinion when it comes to news events and political ideology and things like that. But it is always interesting to see the different filter lens that everyone looks at things, the, the perspectives um, and how we view things. Anyways, it was just one of those interesting discussions I had uh, the other day and just the different viewpoints of uh, uh, what's going on in the news around the world, or even just to share uh, some other perspective of some news items, and the individual end up looking more into the matter, and they end up coming to the same conclusion the more you, you dig into the source and the information. Anyways, uh, onto a couple interesting news items uh, out of the Times of Israel. Netanyahu warned Syria, Israel prepared to strike as needed. So, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said on Monday he warned Syria that Israel would continue to carry airstrikes as needed after the Israeli Air Force destroyed a Syrian anti-aircraft battery in response to the firing of an interceptor missile at Israeli's reconnaissance planes. The policy is clear. Uh, anyone who tries to hurt us, we will hurt them, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu said in the statement. Today, uh, they tried to hit our planes, and this is not acceptable. The Air Force acted with precision, swiftness, and destroyed what needed to be destroyed. Uh, we will continue to act in areas as much as needed to defend our uh, Israeli security. And good for him, you know, to protect the uh, the nation instead of trying to play a political game with the other countries and try to just have negotiate talks, you know, there's... There's times to talk and there's other times for action, and uh, it's that balance that is needed, especially with Israel. Uh, but they're doing the right thing in defending uh, the nation of Israel, attacking some of the air bases or some of the other areas where there is a development from the Iranians to try to develop its bases there. This is why partly the Israelis are trying to attack some of those areas or airfields or bases so that way Iran cannot develop those sort of uh, bases there. Anyway, anyways, interesting development there. So we're just going to keep paying attention to uh, what's happening in Israel and the Middle East. Also speaking of Israel, there was an interesting article out of the Israeli National News, and it was a, a letter that one of the rabbis wrote to President Trump. And uh, it was a letter that was talking about um, why are all these disasters happening uh, to the U.S. And um, it goes through great lengths. He kind of compares with Pharaoh and all the plagues that happened there. And um, personally, I believe it's because the U.S. is meddling with um, Israeli affairs. Every time the U.S. does things with Israel or uh, the Palestinians and try to do this deal or um, situation, we've only seen, and again, there's a, a book out there, I forget who the author was, but he does a lot of the comparisons. When there is a, 
something that happened in a, in a deal or try to negotiate with the Palestinian-Israeli deal. Uh, we see catastrophe or some other sort of disaster happening in the U.S. And, and perhaps maybe that is what's happening here. It's a, it's a spiritual principle. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Yes, U.S. is an ally of, the, of, of uh, Israel. Um, but perhaps maybe behind the scenes, you're starting to see they're not telling us all the full details of what this plan is supposed to be, the compromises that's behind some of these negotiations. And perhaps maybe that is where we're starting to see. I also believe it's a moral breakdown, and we'll touch on this in a little bit, uh, of the country as well. It's, it's reaping what it has sown uh, spiritually. Uh, and morality. Uh, you're seeing just disaster after disaster. It's a wake-up call. It's in times events as well, as Jesus talks about all these different events that are happening. But it was an interesting uh, letter uh, that this rabbi uh, wrote uh, to President Trump. Anyways, uh, you can go on to the Israeli um, National News uh, and, and read that particular article. I just found it fascinating, just as I was thinking of the uh, what's happening in Israel and just other disasters, it was just brought to my attention. Anyways, um, there's going to be more diseases and pestilences, as Jesus talks about, uh, as part of the signs of the time. And I uh, read an article out of the LA Times about the Black Death is killing people, why Madagascar is facing its worst plague outbreak in years. And so it kind of goes through this uh, article that uh, how did the d disease so spread so fastly to uh, how dangerous this plague and this outbreak is. Um, and we're are starting to see just so many more people dying. Uh, they don't have the help that they need. It's causing panic um, through throughout the nation. But we do see there's all kinds of other plagues around the world that's affecting so many lives and so many people. Uh, but this is one of those um, cases that we're starting to see a lot of people dying as a result of this particular outbreak. And um, so we need to be praying for uh, the people of Madagascar, uh, praying that uh, God heals, uh, that he um, opens the door for the gospel to be preached if people are on their dying leg, uh, that they have an opportunity to hear the hope and grace and mercy and forgiveness of Jesus Christ uh, before they um, pass away. Uh, but also, how can uh, we as a church help them? How can we send teams in their medical teams? And I know that the World Health Organization uh, is trying to help out. And again, there's um, many who've gone in to try to help, they end up contracting uh, the the diseases. And um, so it's just something for us to monitor uh, the, the diseases uh, around the world. But as we see, one of the signs of the time, there will be diseases and pestilences and famines in various places. Now, as I'm reading a lot of the news, especially the last couple days, I'm just more seeing a lot more on a morality issue than ever before. And it's the same issues. It's just kind of really been so much more in our face, so much more uh, that's happening. And it really concerns the LGBT agenda. And there's a great article that was put out by Charisma News by uh, Shane Eidelman uh, from uh, one of the pastors. And I think it's in Lancaster area. Um, West side is, I think, the church name in California, just outside of Los Angeles. But he wrote this article out of 10 things you need to know about the LGBT agenda. And he kind of goes through this uh, list where, number one, tolerance. Tolerance, differences. Love embraces regardless of differences. And this is where you see the LGBT agenda is not tolerant. They're very intolerant of other views. And um, uh, the second point on here, we see that challenging those who we disagree is often characteristic of love, not hate. Um, and this is where... Um, like here in Australia, there's a, a vote for same-sex marriage, or at least a poll, and there's people that were fired because they said no, and their employer said, well, that's hate speech. Uh, just because you don't agree with it does not mean it's hate speech. Um, but challenging those with whom we disagree with is often a characteristic of love. It doesn't have to turn to hatred. It doesn't have to turn into an intense argument or debate. And... Um, 
But as Christians, we need to continue to love uh, those around us. Love your enemies, as Jesus says. Um, and, and, and the reason that it's being labeled hate speech when it comes down to it, it's to silence the messenger. Um, they don't want to hear the other side of the story. The third point, it's the, the creator made his plans obvious. He created us as male and female. Um, and that's how we're created to be. And you see how our, our bodies are designed. It's not made for same sex, um, attraction relationships. And, um, so it, it's that complementary design that God made us male and female. Uh, but we see it goes against God's creation, uh, this whole LGBT community. Uh, fourthly, uh, exceptions prove there is a rule. And uh, he goes on and talks about, uh, about this uh, question that arises, but not all same-sex have children, and thus procreation is unnecessary. And it's true, but this fact doesn't support homosexuality. Uh, some are unable to conceive and have no desire for sex marriage, for marriage uh, or sex, except um, they do not avoid the rule. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 2 is very clear that each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. Um, so, so we see there's, or, uh, you know, exceptions uh, prove that there is a rule here and not to compromise in morality. Number five, there is uh, no scriptural support for homosexuality. Nowhere in Scripture do you ever see that taking place. Um, so why should homosexuality or transgenderism be any different? Um, no matter how many laws are passed in favor of gay marriage, it will not change God's mind. Times change, truth does not. And I like how uh, Shane puts that in this point. We also see number six, the Bible is crystal clear on the issue of sexual sin. Again, as a, a famous teacher once said, as this article talks about, if the plain sense makes good sense, seek no other sense, lest it result in nonsense. And um, we, we do see statements like that, um, that people are trying to uh, support homosexuality by misinterpreting the abandoned natural relations as Romans chapter 1 talks about. Uh, or that the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was only uh, neglected the poor. That was not what was going on there. Or the Corinthians outdated and Leviticus is talking about rape. Uh, indeed, neglecting the poor is always a sin. But it was not the only sin. In addition to the rampant homosexuality, there were drunkards, gluttons, covetous, profane, wicked. The, the context of Sodom and Gomorrah's destruction was much more than neglecting the poor. Uh, they were haughty and committed abominations. And so one needs to understand it wasn't just about the homosexuality, even though that's what it's known for. Uh, number seven, the uh, it says that God can advise against eating selfish as well as homosexuality. Um, number eight, the uh, mocking tones of most pastors who support homosexuality speaks volumes. Uh, so there's a, a movement uh, that is truly of God, is undergirded with humility. Uh, words are seasoned with grace. But the opposite is often true with pastors who distort the truth. And um, we, we, we see that as pastors... We need to make sure we're, we're clear on what the Bible says. We're clear on our opinions, uh, that it needs to match up with what Scripture teaches, and that we shouldn't be mocking people. We shouldn't be making fun of people as well. Uh, so we need to be very careful that way. Also, number nine, it says, I was born this way is not an excuse. Uh, so although the new biological and so psychological Evidence suggests that the idea of being born okay lacks scientific evidence. Let's assume that a person can be born gay. Uh, we're all born with the bent to lie, lie, uh, cheat, or lust, or indulge and deceive. In fact, pornography has been coined every man's battle. But that doesn't make it right. It makes us sinful and in desperate need of a savior. The hearts of men can change and change daily through the relationship with Jesus Christ. 
And lastly, number 10, the struggle for gay rights is not a civil rights issue. I know this is what they've pushing it and making this an agenda, but race and color are not choices. Homosexuality is not a civil rights issue. It cannot be linked with the uh, uh, abolishment of slavery either. And some would say, well, the Bible encourages slavery, and therefore homosexuality obviously is okay. Now, well, the Bible never says that slavery is right. It merely references the time when people had slaves and what those conditions were. That's kind of the idea behind that sort of thing. But homosexuality is a choice. You don't have to give in to the lust of the flesh. And I know that there's struggles with those that struggle with those tendencies um, and from early childhood, they can talk about those feelings, but it doesn't mean you need to give in to it. And when the Bible's clearly defined our role as male and female, and that this is a sin, just like lying's a sin, adultery's a sin, fornication's a sin, sex outside of marriage is a sin, all these other things, but it doesn't mean we need to give in to it. Anyways, it's one of those uh, great articles I would encourage people to read through and more extensive. But this kind of ties into some of these other components that are popping up. Just uh, the other day at a Los Angeles Times and uh, WND also had this uh, uh, article that a drag queen demon reads to kids at uh, Michelle Obama's library in Long Beach. And so a Long Beach congressional candidate said he's outraged after a drag queen sporting demon-like horns was invited to read to children at a local library. Uh, Omar Navarro, a Republican candidate looking to unseat Maxine Waters for the 43rd district. Can't wait for that to happen. She has been an absolute disaster in the House of Representatives. Anyways, posted an image of a former... Um, Sashi Maki uh, reading to kids as part of a drag queen story hour at Michelle Obama's neighborhood library on Saturday. So he, he goes out and tweets, why, what are we teaching our kids in school? Demonic teachings alive in Long Beach. I'm outraged that they would allow this. They're not the only school. They're not the only library to allow this sort of behavior. There's another one that was taking place in uh, um, New York area as well. There's a lot uh, of just pushing this agenda of the whole LGBTQI um, agenda and, and trying to get people to accept and to be more tolerant. You can still be um, accepting people for who they are. You don't have to accept their behavior or their lifestyle. So there's a, a deception that's going on here and just such a push uh, through this uh, agenda uh, upon society. And then there is this other interesting um, uh, article that came out of the New Zealand Herald um, the other day, how Kiwi love coach marries hundreds to themselves. Marry to yourself, really? A former escort turned love coach had previously married herself has married 275 people to themselves in a mass ceremony in the U.S. Uh, originally from Christchurch, this lady, Amanjay Love, uh, but living on the Gold Coast, had previously married herself on a beach ceremony in Australia in February. The mass sologamy uh, ceremony took place in a mansion in Phoenix, Arizona, on Saturday that gathered people from all over the world to marry themselves there. Love, 33, is a formal $5,000 a week escort, says that she decided to inspire others to follow her steps and become their own soulmate. Each person who married themselves on Sunday paid more than $2,000 to attend the ceremony. It's an hour to help so many people uh, on their healing journey, uh, the love coach said. Uh, there are lots of tears and laughter when I said, I pronounce you married to yourself. I mean, what a mockery of what marriage is and the institution of marriage um, that you see this. And you can see this is just a, a tool of the enemy to try to destroy people's lives, to confuse people, to deceive people, and to buy into the lies. And then lastly, um, very sad to see this sort of report, but again, the Planned Parenthood celebrates 101 uh, years, uh, you know, on Monday, marking the century-long 
operation, which started as a small birth control clinic in Brooklyn, is now a an abortion giant operating in every U.S. state. And um, so they've killed and murdered um, between 2000, or 1978 to 2016, almost 7 million babies aborted, murdering, killing them uh, during that time. And while uh, they abort some, you know, close to 3,000 uh, unborn babies last year alone, and that's kind of their, their yearly uh, murder rate uh, that they handed out only 2,890 uh, adoption referrals, uh, roughly one adoption referral every 114 abortions. Uh, but it's just so sad to see so many people going down that track uh, using abortion as a method of birth control. But I say this in the previous reports, all this immorality has certainly changed and affected the culture and society and the nations uh, for the worst. We're seeing the decline of the nations. We're seeing the breakdown of the family. We see so many people lacking purpose and meaning and, and peace in their life uh, because they're, they're buying into the deception and the confusion. So may the Lord open uh, their eyes. May they turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins. There is hope and there is healing and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. So I hope and I pray that you all have a wonderful and blessed rest of the week. And keep your eyes on Jesus, stay in the word, and may we continue to share the love and grace and mercy of Jesus Christ to as many as we uh, come in contact with, whether they agree with us or not. We can still respect people for who they are and still love on people and be the servant he's called us to be. So until next time, may the Lord radically and outrageously bless you.